Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Erin and today we get to continue Where the Water Tastes Like Wine. So far this game has been really really cool. It's been a really fun experience. I didn't really know what to expect going into it because like I said in the last part, there haven't been many videos made about this game. Not many people seem to know about it which I think is such a shame because it's so unique. It's so cool. I think I'd really love to explore more indie games on this channel and play lesser known games like this because I just think it's a really, really cool opportunity to try something unique and different and something that not many people know about and try to get the name out there a little bit more, I guess. Overall, this game does remind me a lot of Cuphead and Red Dead Redemption 2 specifically because of the, the time area and the western vibes it has going on. The open world aspect. I feel like is a bit barren, but other than that, this game to me is really really cool so far. I like exploring the world. The voice acting in this game is really really good. It's really atmospheric, I'd say, and also the music is so so good. I've been listening to it recently. It's so good. You guys have to listen to it for real. I don't even really know if our character has a name, but we're a skeleton now and I think that the more stories we get, the better our chances are to getting our life back and our skin back. <laughs> A lot of it is still really confusing to me, I won't lie. Um, I feel like I'm not following the story extremely well. I hope that as I edit these videos and as I play more, things will become a little more clear to me and I'll understand a bit more of what I'm supposed to be doing. Since it is an open world game, this is probably going to be a long series and I am excited for it. I hope you guys are too. So let's not waste any more time and let's get back into this game. Okay, so we're in Connecticut, I think. <laughs> The map is quite confusing. Oh, okay, okay, I didn't even open this in the last episode. Um, inventory. I have a pair of bone dice loaded to roll snake eyes nearly every time. Huh, I'm not really sure what all this is. Looks like I have a lot of things I need to get still. Okay, stories. Active stories. Oh my god, 10 out of 237? <laughs> Good lord. All right. That's cool, but I feel like since the eye isn't open all the way in that corner there, it means that there's still a lot more to the story that I haven't discovered yet. We met Quinn, the hobo kid around Boston, yeah. I can't tell if Quinn is a boy or a girl. I feel bad. Holy crap. <laughs> there's still a lot more that we have. A lot more. This map is huge. We can literally go across the United the whole United States. Okay, well, this makes it a little easier, I feel like, because at first I didn't really know where I was going. I was sort of just going in a random direction. I think we should go from the East Coast to the West Coast, so maybe we'll go down and reach Florida and then go kind of like a zigzag. I don't know, but I'm really excited. Okay, character. Oh, that way, okay, let's just get rid of everything for now. Okay, holy crap. Look at all these characters, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Okay. Quinn, yes. Wow, this is so cool. Okay, <laughs> I'm really excited. Now that I saw that, this is making a little more sense. I think what I'm gonna do is head to Vermont. Okay, there are a few things in New York. Uh, looks like we got everything in Maine. Okay, well, let's check out this area. You come across a girl picking wild blueberries. She smiles and greets you. Ah, in. She offers you some from her birch bark basket. Thank you. You reach in the basket for blueberries, but pull out a handful of small, smooth stones, all the colors of the rainbow. The snickering girl runs into the trees as fast and light as a rabbit. Throw stones or drop stones? Okay, I'm not gonna throw stones at a little kid. That's pretty messed up. Just drop them. The stones tumble from your hand and hit the ground instantly turning black as the night. 
Your heart leaps in surprise. How strange. That's really strange. Were they magical stones? A girl with strange stones. I thought she was just pranking me. Well, she kind of was, but... Let's go over here. He leans against a fence <laughs> and turns to face you as you pass him by. At his back is a bag full of bird seed. He assures you that the gawky birds perching on his body are the last remaining passenger pigeons. I love the art style. It's so cool. Uh, I thought they were extinct. They look extinct to you? You're not sure those dull gray pigeons look anything like the pictures you've seen of passenger pigeons. Though you can't help thinking they stare at you mm. a little too intently. Say, you like birds? Uh, sure, sure I do. They're lovely creatures. Guileless, really. Hunted damn near to extinction, weren't you? <laughs> he strokes one of his birds under the chin. You think you see drips of blood flecking the creature's dirty gray head. Uh, excuse me. You sense it's about time you start moving on. You be kind to the little birds now, you hear? You hurry along the road, though the flapping of ungainly wings seems to follow you for hours. Move on. I'm a little unsettled. The pigeon keeper. It's a little creepy, I won't lie. Um, I felt like if I said I didn't like birds, he was gonna kick my ass or something. Is this a campsite? Hmm. Oh, it's a first communion, looks like, and the photographers are struggling to keep up with the flow of family photos outside the church. Can you write? They demand. For hours, you scribble names, take notes, and keep the line orderly. For an afternoon's work, it pays very well. Huh. I guess I have money now. I don't really know what we need money for. There's, like, food and stuff we can buy, but... Is that really, like, a necessity? I'm not too sure. Okay. Why is the pigeon guy in the lovers category? <laughs> okay, well, it looks like we got everything in Vermont. So, I guess we'll go over to New York and then down to Delaware and New Jersey. I really wish you could move faster. Besides the whistling. I think it's a cute mechanic, but also... Just takes a little too long to get to places. I'll have to cut out a lot of this. Okay. I'm gonna hitchhike. Please. Sir. Hey! Asshole! Maybe if I step on their car. Damn it, whatever. The music is so good. What's this area? The eye is like fully open. I don't hear a story. Yes, let's do that. This man can barely wait to get through the pleasantries before asking if you've heard this story. 110% true, he says. I heard it from my nephew, and it happened to someone he knows well. Well, sure. The man launches into his telling. It's polished. He obviously done this many times before. He tells you the story of the taxi, which shows its rider the future. You recognize the bones of it from your experience of the odd silent taxi cab in Boston. It's been embellished in the inter... In the interim? Listen to the tale. Afterwards, you thank the man and move onwards. You'll have to remember that version. Even if it's not quite what happened, it's a good story. Move on. Huh. Story grew in the telling. Let's look at that real quick. Oh! Okay. So, these stories get, like, passed down more and more. And, obviously, they get embellished as they're being told. And... Looks like all the mini stories that we have, like the the women praying in the woods or the seagulls, the eye is just barely open, and the more it opens, the more details get added to the story. That's really cool. So, like the girl with the strange stones that we just ran into, it'll probably be like a really interesting story as you know the more we learn about it. So we just have to keep gathering these stories, man. Let's search this place. Clouds roll together to fill the sky. Watch the sky churn or find cover. 
Let's find cover. Not very daring. You shelter beneath a rocky overhang. Above, the clouds turn gray and purple and blue. Lightning arcs between them. The hairs on the back of your arm stand on end. I thought we were a skeleton. <laughs> okay, watch the sky churn. The lightning is so strong that it seems to open a path in the haze above you. You are sure you see massive talons curved around the clouds. Keep watching, I guess. The thunder is so immense that the ground trembles. Your lips and hands tingle from the electric charge that fills the air until the dancing lightning passes on over the hills. Uh, moving on. The massive thunderstorm. That was really cool. Let's wait before we go into the city. And look at these mini stories out here. What's this place? Oh! Hey, we've met one of these dudes before. A jet black crow alights on the low branch of a twisted tree. Look at you, it caused. Think you got some good stories already? Well, I heard better. Much better. <laughs> It seems to wink at you. Want to hear my tricks? Uh, I feel like it's such a bad idea to talk to this crow. He's kind of an asshole. Uh, but ask about the stories. The ones you got now, psh, pathetic stuff. You tell those stories around and they'll come back more exciting, more satisfying. So always listen to the stories other folks tell. Their tales are less true, sure, but more useful around the campfire. Makes sense. <laughs> The boss has a point about the true ones, though, the crow admits. They're extra interesting. You'll learn a couple folks' true life stories, and everyone will like them, no matter what kind of stories they think they want to hear. Oh, any other tips? Well, everyone's the captain of their destiny, he gives a burst of laughter. Ain't no bootstraps in the world that can save you now. But the choices you make, they change the kind of stories you can tell. It ruffles its feathers. Sort of a shrug. Choose wisely, or don't. Ha! <laughs> Move on. Okay, so the crow is basically just like low key tutorial guide thing. A few wanderers like you are looking for a place to camp. We heard there's a Leatherman cave nearby, they tell you. They describe a locally famous vagrant who hiked this area for almost 30 years. He's dead now. But his caves are the best place to camp at any town. Where is it? You and the other wanderers find the cave easily. Because someone's lit a fire there. As you approach, you see a silhouette bend over the flames with an odd creaking sound. Like a door swinging in the wind. Who's there? His coat is crudely stitched from leather plates that squeak against each other. The Leatherman, one of the others whispers. A ghost. The Leatherman must have heard, but he just stares. His face is corpse still. <laughs> I love the options here. Oh shit! Or, of course he isn't a ghost. I kind of want to just say, oh shit, but of course he isn't a ghost. He's eating, you say, and point out his can of beans. Je ne suis pas un fantôme, the leather man says, and adds, Idiot. <laughs> oh, bursts your companion. Canadien. <laughs> Soon, he and the leatherman are deep in conversation, and your group has a safe place to rest. <laughs> The Leatherman's Cave. That's really funny. <laughs> I kind of wanted to say, oh shit, but I like that we had like a conversation with them. Let's go into the city. The air stinks of gasoline and trash, and you're boxed in by brick. But damn, there's something invigorating about that stink. God, you feel like there's an engine in your chest. Um, let's explore first. The engines belch black smoke as the ferry churns gray water into froth. A broad-shouldered figure leans out over the rail, eyeing the skyscrapers on the horizon. Nearby, a man and a woman 
speak in low, urgent voices. He takes her wrist gently. She is weeping softly. Okay, so it looks like the little icon at the bottom shows you what type of story you're going to be listening to. So the heart obviously means like the lover's uh, tarot card. So mm, let's listen to the couple. I wish you didn't have to go, <laughs> she says. There's got to be work on some of those buildings going up. His thumb skates over her pulse point. I checked every day for a week. There ain't. I'll be back, though. Got your picture in my wallet, don't I? It's not forever. Keep listening. <laughs> Eve's dropping. Her words are split by a sob. Might as well be. My parents didn't come to New York for this. She leans against him, the wind tossing her hair. He pulls her to his chest. I'm leaving because I gotta go. If there was another way... They stand together, close, quiet, in the stiff breeze. I wonder if they know that man next to him or if he's just kind of standing there. The couple parted by unemployment. Yeah, because this takes place during the Depression time era, I believe. Let's earn money. You wander the streets of the city looking for a way to make some cash. I don't know what panhandle means. Is that just like begging? Let's look for work. Digging holes. Not what you had in mind, but damn, they're digging a lot of holes in this park. A foreman assigns you to a work group within a mix of other disheveled men and women and sends you off to dig a pit by the water fountain. Keep quiet too, or what's this about? It's probably a bad idea to ask questions. But I'm going to anyway. Nobody wants to say. A young woman keeps mouthing something to you across the hole, but you can't make it out. What is she saying? Dear Lobby? Dave Hobby? <laughs> Dean Bobber? You never get anyone to admit what this is all about, but you do get paid pretty okay. I don't know what- yeah, I don't- I can't make out what she was trying to tell me. I feel- I feel stupid. Does anyone know what she was trying to say? It's really weird. Uh... I can get some food. I, I wonder if maybe it'll be invigorating or something. Let's get a blue... Oh, this looks like it's more expensive. Uh, fresh bagel? Okay, so let's go further up into New York because I'm in New Jersey now. Or no, I'm in Delaware? No. No, I'm in New Jersey. Never mind. Let's search this place. Oh, I'm earning more money. This half-finished house provides good shelter from the wind, and the construction workers are already packing up their tools for the day. One of them sees you sneaking in, but just gives you a wink. Try the basement, he suggests. His advice is good. You find a spot for a long, cool rest. Oh, that wasn't earning money. I think I was just, like, resting. That's cool. There's one over here. I hope I can find a campsite soon. Search this place. Outside the small thicket of apple trees, the phrase tended to by John Chapman is carved into a fence post. Nearby, a hound lies on its side, perfectly still. Flies buzz around its ears. Aww. But a grizzled man pauses at his digging to shoo them off. He's burying his dog. Is this Johnny Appleseed? Uh, help him dig. There's an extra shovel. With it, the two of you make short work of the grave. He tells you about his beliefs. Why he's raising apple orchards in the middle of the country. Yeah, it is. I feel like... It's a sin to graft. He tells you. Hurts the tree. Eventually, the hole is deep enough. Bear witness. He stoops to the ground and lowers the pup into the earth. Tears flow freely. I'll see him again in heaven, he tells you. Our souls are bound by love. 
He wipes his eyes. I don't think I can bear to stay here, though. Maybe I'll set out again. That's really sad. Moving on. John Chapman, his orchard, and his dog. That's really sad. I'm glad I helped him dig. Oh, that's bordered into Canada. So yeah, I am at the top of New York, I think. Yep. What's this area? Is this a church? I think As so. you walk along the river near an unfinished bridge, a man with a tool belt catches sight of you. Hey, over there. He calls out. You look like you could use a quick way to get some hard-earned money. Hard-earned is right. The bridge hangs high over a perilous drop. I don't know if you can die in this game. <laughs> I don't think you can. Uh, except... Great! He exclaims. Suppose you'll want a safety belt. We Thunderbird people don't need them. We fly when we fall. He chuckles. Uh, belt up. You find yourself up high, looking over the rushing river that crashes around the foundation of the bridge. As you work side by side, the man mentions, You can see Thunderbirds up here if you know how to look. Inquire? You ask him to explain. Practice your peripheral vision, if you dare. Last thing you need up here is for them to see you seeing them. And come swooping at you. I can never do this. He says, laughingly. I'm afraid of heights, but I guess we'll try it. You only see the clouds thicken. It sure does pass the time working. Hmm. The man pays you well when you're done with the job. Huh. The bridge builders. Thunderbirds. What the hell is he talking about? Okay, this is... Yeah, I can't go past there. Go here first. Muddling through the dark, you stumble into the path of the white deer. Its beauty strikes you at once. It is something otherworldly, beyond borders. A moon swimming in the void. Human shouts not far away break the spell. The deer's ears prick up. This thing is being hunted. Uh, help the deer. You know a way out of here. As the hunter's cries get louder, you approach the deer carefully, palms outstretched. As you grow close, your features become clearer in the light of the deer's aura. It bolts into the path of an oncoming train. Did I just kill it? Oh man, that stinks. Okay, I feel so bad. Maybe I should have just done nothing. Probably the edge of away. summer has turned the ocean choppy and misanthropic, and the skies miserably gray. The boardwalk prophetess lured you into her tent with a promise to read a fortune for free. Seems like business has slowed to a crawl already. Why does she look terrified? What am I doing to her? Sit at her table. Before you lie the instruments of her profession. There's tarot cards. Right tarot away, cards. Okay, it is tarot cards. But also Marseille for traditionalists. Rosary beads and costume jewelry. And of course, the centerpiece. A great glass globe. That looks like shattered right now. That's not good. Uh, I've been saying tarot cards wrong the whole time. I thought it was tarot cards, and I saw it, and I was like, it's a tarot cards? I don't know. Listen to your fortune. <laughs> With practiced theatricality, she goes directly for the crystal ball, letting her eyes unfocus as though she can see a great distance into it. She brings up names, places, asks if you've known someone called John. If you have a relative in Newark. Isn't that in Delaware? Uh, be a good sport or be a dick. <laughs> be a good sport. You latch on to what she says 
and together you dance towards some insights about your romantic prospects. It's relieving to meet an honest charlatan instead of the ghouls and ghasts of the road. You might even say you're having fun until she abruptly stops talking. I wonder if she's gonna see like where we are at this point in the story, like being in this contract with the wolf. Ask her what's wrong. Your eyes, she says, her voice suddenly drained of the bassy drama that was her stock in trade. You've met him. You've seen him too. You carry him with you. Yes, did you miss me? That is creepy. Are we talking for like the man in gray? I don't know. I don't even know if he was called the man in gray or the wolf. Probably end up calling him both throughout the series, but that's really freaking creepy. Are we speaking as him? Did you miss me? The words that come out of your mouth are not your own. Yeah. They seem unwilling or unable to form properly out of a human throat. They're more like snarls. Warning noises of a vicious animal. Try to move. The glass globe shatters. Your vision is hazy, and your body is not your own. You came far to get away from me, the voice lodged inside you says. But this one has a way of wandering. The fortune teller has collapsed, cowering. Consider your debt to me repaid. Blackout? When you come to your senses, you're lying face down on the rough wood of the boardwalk, sore and weak. An empty patch of wood, cleaner than the surrounding planks, is all that remains of the fortune teller's tent. <laughs> What the hell just happened? That's really weird, we're possessed by the wolf in a way. Let's hear a story though. A long black car growls up in front of this hotel. Out steps a woman in an extravagant hat and coat, followed by a whole crowd of hangers on. Is she a singer? An actress? You don't recognize her face, but to your surprise, you recognize the story she's telling. Listen in. In a sharp, transatlantic accent, she's telling everyone in her party a story about the cloud tinged with a, with a color no human has seen before. It's clearly the story of the light from the sky, but changed in a few entertaining ways. Keep listening in. Isn't that something? She asks. Her various followers agree. She pays the driver of the limousine and sweeps into the hotel like a thunderstorm of red velvet. Someone should do a picture about it. You hear her exclaim. <laughs> That was a horrible accent. I wonder how the story was changed though. We didn't really get to hear that. Uh, okay. So we should probably move on to... I'm gonna go through Pennsylvania like that and sort of cut over into New Jersey. And then Delaware and then... West Virginia, Virginia, North Carolina. Oh! It shows where Quinn went. Maybe we can go see... Quinn. As we go further down. Yeah. Okay, let's keep the character thing up and the unseen stories. That way I know where I'm gonna be going. Let's check this place out. I think I can sleep here. Yeah. Okay, this house is abandoned. Boarded up windows, unruly window boxes, and a gate rusted completely shut. You hop the fence. In the backyard, you find a garden shed with a door that shuts tight. While cars rumble by outside, you get a long, safe sleep. Awesome. Okay, now I'm not so tired anymore, I guess. I don't know how that really affects me. Maybe because I move the same speed every time, so. Okay, let's see what's in here. You hear the whippoorwill first, Ooh. shrill and close. Then you see him, high up above the black streaks of wires. A lineman, fraying belt holding him to the pole. 
A damned bird has come to perch on a power line. Stare hungrily at the man's soul. This is kind of scary. Watch him. He's unsteady. Oh no. His hands are shaky. And his body sways in the wind. You spot his tool bag next to the pole. Worn and frayed. Much like the man. A half-gone bottle of cheap rye pokes out of it. Walk away or take the bottle. I don't want to steal his stuff. Walk away. You leave the man to his work and his vices. The whippoorwill cheers you on. Whatever it's waiting for from the drunkard lineman, it'll eventually get. As you walk away, for a long time, you still hear its cry. Whippoorwill. 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 Move on. The drunkard lineman. Uh, I mean, maybe he shouldn't be drinking because he'll probably fall off of there now that I think about it. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. I wonder if this will complete a story. Let's see. Here's a story. This kindly old man sharing the shade under the bridge with you tells a few rambling stories. Some true seeming, some conspicuously less so. All true, he assures you. There's history in this place, going all the way back to Indian times. Strange stuff happens around here. Stuff? Why can't I read? Can't all be true. Sure it is, he scoffs. And then, as if to prove himself right, he launches into a story about the four identical men, born to two different mothers, who confuse themselves amongst each other. And this one, you know, it's the story of the two men who mis each mistook each other for his missing brother, but wilder and stranger than you remember. I know that one. See then? The old man laughs. So I ain't pulling your leg. It's all true. <laughs> That's really funny. Born to two different mothers who got them born to two different mothers who got them confused. <laughs> That'd be horrible. The hotel is an old manor house that's seen better days. A grand structure surmounted by a gambrel roof that dwarfs the house itself. It's eerily still, but for two boys at play. Each one so small and light. They barely leave tracks in the deep snow. Oh, That's really sad because back in these times, I mean, people hardly had anything to eat. They barely had anywhere to stay. They couldn't make any money. It was a very, very dark time. Uh, make your way inside or watch them. Let's watch them for now. They seem old for their size. Around 10 years old. Though their clothes are mismatched. They're perfectly identical, mm. down to the pattern of freckles on their pale cheeks. They conduct their games in eerie silence. It's a little, uh, creepy. Make your way inside. The clerk behind the counter is old, and your room key is worn. But night approaches, and the price is low. Just before you shut the room door, there they are. The twins, staring at you from the corridor. Uh, hi, kids. Get some sleep. In the morning, as you leave, the clerk asks, Did you sleep well? Uh, tell the truth. Too tired to lie, you tell him about the noise outside your door. The trampling of small feet on the corridor outside. The dreams disturbed with violent and hideous images. That's odd, he says, weak-eyed. There are no children staying with us. Oh. <laughs> That's why they weren't leaving any footprints in the snow. Huh. Okay. The silent twins. I think they're ghosts. <laughs> That's freaking creepy. The one of the hard parts about this game is actually um, reading like what's gonna happen before he even says it in the dialogue. Because I, I read what he was gonna say before he actually said it, so it's still I don't know. I feel like maybe it should come up as the text as he's saying it. I don't really know. 
search this place, though. By nightfall, the hospitality of this sleepy uh, hamlet, combined with their superstitious tales, has both overstuffed your stomach and filled you with a hollow dread. Folks say these woods are full of apparitions, witches, and worse. You curse yourself for getting on the road so late. Uh, what the hell is up with Pennsylvania, man? Walk on. In the moonlight, every valley and hollow at the feet of the Tappan Zee seems like a stolen shred of the abyss itself. Fireside tales seem less fanciful, and every cackling crow and moaning whippoorwill seems like a demon perched on the shivering spindly trees. This place is really creepy. What's up with the headless horseman there? But something Listen. cuts through the noise. The muffled sound of hooves galloping on the cold, muddy road. When he finally slows his horse alongside you, it's as though he had just appeared out of the mist. Look at him, even though he's he astride a gigantic black courser. And though his boots are muddy and ragged, he wears an immaculate coat with great shining buttons. From his saddle hangs an antiquated flintlock and a cavalry saber. In the darkness, you can hardly see above his towering shoulders. Hmm. Greet the rider. His voice is a rumbling croak, deep, but as though his throat is filled with thorns. Have you happened upon a cannonball around here? You can tell English isn't his first language. German is. His hand, so pale it's almost blue in the moonlight, grips the reins in a fist. <laughs> Run the hell away. Or, sorry, I haven't. Uh, <laughs> my first instinct would probably be to run the hell away, but I'm scared that he would chase me, so sorry I haven't. You mumble an apology, and watch as he silently rides away, back into the mist. He's cloaked in black, you notice from behind, but the blood running down over his shoulders glints crimson in the moonlight. Uh, I hate this. Was he hit by the cannonball and that's why he's bleeding? What the hell was that about? The rider in the woods. That one was pretty cool. I like that one. Oh, the crow's back. You notice a black crow sitting on the fence post, watching it with unsettling intensity. Hey, it blurts. Hey, friend. Hey. You hear about trains? It gives its throaty cackle. Locomotion, that's the life. I got some good travel tips here. Ask about travel. You have a ride a train, it asks. With your budget, you'll need to. Hop on at a train yard, though. Fast and convenient. But the railroad bulls don't really like it when you ride in the empty boxcars. If you get caught, you'll get beaten. It hops and pecks at something on the ground. Hmm. On the positive side, maybe you'll meet someone to trade stories with. But if you don't like the sound of that, you could hitchhike. Find a friendly car, it laughs. I feel sorry for you landlubbers. No wings, just motors. You can't even cross rivers when you want to. Only at a safe crossing. You got a point there. I always do. You notice that its beak doesn't move as it speaks, but before you can tell anything else about it, anything else about it, it off it flies. That crow's really unsettling to me. <laughs> okay, we're back in New Jersey. I guess I missed something here. Oopsie. Search this place. The stream is a clear, what reflective shade of blue. <laughs> Unusual in this region, where bog iron colors the river's brown. Across the way, a goat with great leather wings laps up the water, its sunken red eyes fixed on your every movement. Uh, hey Satan, what's up? You now notice the unnatural absence of wildlife. No fish swim in the stream. No birds sing in the trees. The winged goat drinks with a forked tongue, only abstractly concerned with your presence. 
uh, let's not approach it. I don't know, I feel like that's not a good idea. Let's just drink the water and chill with it. You cup the water in your hands, ice cold somehow, and take a swallow, soothing the coarseness in your parched throat. Clear as the water is, the stream bed isn't visible, even looking straight down. Swim in the water? Your feet don't reach the bottom, so you float in the cool water, feeling washed clean. The ripples hmm. flow as far as you can see, never fading. I guess I'll wave at the goat. The winged goat snorts and heads in the other direction. How was I so chill about that? I was just like, I'm swimming. Hey, Satan. Hope you're having a good time. Uh, let's see. I definitely made a lot more progress in this episode. I'm gonna keep playing, but... Oh, I think I'm near Quinn. Right over here. Let's go talk to them again. I wanna talk to them first. Chapter one, pay for your Oh, this isn't. My twin brother Paul and I always got into trouble, but we were good. Hello, no person. We didn't do nothing to anybody until we left. I like how he's just telling me his life story, even though I'm a complete stranger. Then we hurt a lot of people. Me, more so than Paul, because he, well, he didn't make it through. Poor Paul. The march I was on, the bonus army. It's less a bonus and more an acknowledgement of what I've had to suffer. Civilians will never understand. Yeah. Tell me a happy story. Something to make the world seem kind. All right, I think you definitely need that. Okay. I don't really have any happy stories. Um, I guess maybe tell the story of the two lighthouse keepers near Portland, Maine. That one was kind of happy. Uh, let's do that one. Tell the story of the two lighthouse keepers. I yeah. Like There's some hope left for you too, you know. Don't give it away too quickly. Thanks, man. The past doesn't even feel like it happened. It feels like it's happening in every moment, in every slumber. This guy needs a pick-me-up for sure. This guy's really depressed. I mean, he lost his brother, so that's fair. Have any exciting kind of story? My memories get my adrenaline up, but they're not exactly fun. Um... What type of story did he want? Exciting story? He wants a thrilling story, okay. I think the taxi one is pretty interesting. Maybe that's thrilling? Yeah. It'd be fun to listen to, you know? Oh. Uh, a good distraction, anyway. Opened up his eye all the way. The future's the issue, ain't it? The Great War leaves us nothing to go back to. Plucking up the hope and leaving us only with the vile and the unforgiven. War is never ending. So anyway, tell me a funny story? You seem like you know a few good ones. Okay, uh... I can't tell the... Mm. Okay, so the ones that I tell, I can't tell anymore in that category. Okay, I want to tell them... Mm. I want to tell them about the guys who mistook each other for their brother, but... Uh, funny story... The Leatherman's Cave? I don't know if that was exactly funny. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Paul would have liked that one. Aww. My faith? Well, God and I haven't been on speaking terms since I got the infection. I gave the fucker so many chances to make things right, and he hasn't followed through. God, or...? <laughs> Do you know any happy stories? Hopeful ones? I thought I already told you one. God, so needy. <laughs> I guess tell the story of the winged goat by Christine Water. Maybe that's hopeful. It's sort of creepy, though. Got nightmares enough without hearing that kind of horror. 
I guess it was, yeah, it was kind of creepy. Well, my sister, Jessie, won't forgive me for what happened to Paul, so she won't let me back home. Yikes. I made my own way for a while after that, so no one could afford gardeners. Who could stand to care for the land nowadays? Know any good jokes? I'm not so good at telling them anymore. He really wants jokes, man. I don't have any funny stories here. I'm so sorry. Uh, I don't think I'll be able to... I mean, I already opened up his eye all the way, so does, does that mean, like, I already kind of earned his trust? Uh, Twins Adventures, they weren't very happy, though. Oh, focusing on the funny parts. <laughs> oh, okay. Wish I could tell that one to my sister. Travel. Well, this walk feels like a little bit of freedom now and again. The flowers along the road make for fine company. Here's the sun. <laughs> I've got to go. I'm headed up the road this way. Will our paths cross? I hope so, dude. Days come and go when the terrors return. They'll never be able to pay back what they owe me, but I'll always keep at them. What about you? Is there something somebody owes you? My soul? That's interesting. I like talking to him. He had a very soothing voice, that's for sure. Let's go up and see if I can find Quinn again. Okay, is Quinn here? Quinn. Huh. I will get by. Stranger, it's good to see you again. You know, I'm gonna see this whole world one day. But for now, I just got my sight set on seeing all 48 of the great U.S. <laughs> I already seen 10 whole states. That's better than my folks ever done, that's for sure. Oh, Quinn. Plenty of townies and even some tramps treat me like I'm kid simple. But I ain't helpless. And I only act it when I ain't got no better choice. Like if I get pinched. <laughs> I like uh, the knife in your hand that really... That really says I, uh, I'm a trusting individual. I do right fine on my own. Don't need nobody but Cass and Flip. And me, right? I'm in the mood for something real funny-like. Everyone wants a funny story. I don't have funny stories. Let's, uh... Yeah. Oh, they already know that one. Damn. Strange stones? I don't know if that's funny, though. Not sure I quite follow that one. Yeah, this sorry. country. I don't rightly know what this thing called America is. I know what I done been told in school, but the words don't fit the picture. What with tramping across the whole thing, figure I'll find out for myself soon enough. I want a story that scares me. <laughs> now I'm older, almost nobody can do it. Give me your best shot. Okay, that I can do. I have this Satan one here. The writer in the woods around Philadelphia. That one freaked me out. Wow, <laughs> that's the stuff, stranger. Spooky campfire tales are my favorite. You Being got it. Trapped, caged. You think beggardom is a prison? No, stranger. Beggardom is freedom. Responsibility is the real trap. Wound tied like an old spring. <laughs> Pride and pretending will bleed folk dry. And then when there ain't nothing left to be proud of, when they can't pretend no more, they'll unwind. That, hold, that holds some truth to it. Hey, tell me a funny story. You seem like you still got a sense of humor. Again? I don't have any freaking funny stories. I'm sorry, I don't. Uh, two lighthouse keepers? Was that a funny one? I don't think so. I don't get too much out of yeah. tales that are so cheerful. Not enough excitement for me. You wanted the a happy past one. Is just that. Past. The whole world is at my feet, so why bother talking about the one place I can't go to no more? Hey, tell me one of those exciting stories. Okay. Fortune Teller and the Curse Up by Buffalo? Is that one too creepy? Uh, let's try it. I feel like I'm not doing so well this time. Were you trying to scare me? Yeah. Oh, you didn't go far enough. Huh. Damn. I remember lots of folks talking about fate and fortune before I started my travels. Talk on the river was about them pop you lists and their Louisiana <laughs> governor. Some folks say they was up to no good, that they was lazy and un-American, cheating fate with government meddling. 
Others said we all got the right to be kings, if we'd only let all folks have a fair shot. I suppose I ain't right in line with neither, but I don't think there's nothing un-American about needing help. I want to hear one of them venturing tales. Got any? Okay. I will try my best. I'm not very good at this. Build bridge builders? Mm. Is that venturesome? Well, that was yeah. something. You spin a good yarn. Freedom? Well, that's what them trains have come to mean to me. Freedom. Crossing a country wider than imagination. Well, sun's coming up, so I've got to get ready to go. Thanks for the tales, friend. Where are you heading next? Decided yet? Maybe our paths will cross. I'm going up the road this way myself. Hope I'll see something fun. I generally do, you know. There's interesting things to see everywhere if you keep your eyes open. <laughs> I really like talking to Quinn. Okay. Oh, I can finish the story here. Wait, let's do that real quick. The policeman in the truck on this corner is having a pretty wild argument with someone with someone on the other end of the radio. No, he keeps saying. No way. You listen in as a man on the radio fish, finishes a st wild story about future Boston, where the taxi ride costs $20. Wait a second. I swear this is what happened. The cop over the radio insists. That's when it clicks. You know this story. It's a stranger version of the story of the taxi, which shows its rider of the future, but with some bits left out were replaced. Ain't true, the cop in the truck sighs. If only he knew. Hmm. <laughs> That's funny, they keep making parts up. That's cool. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this episode off here. I think that I, we did a lot so far. Um, we got a lot more done in the upper parts of the eastern coast and mostly New York, Pennsylvania, um, and a little bit of Delaware, I think. We crossed into Maryland a little bit as well. I think that what I'm going to do next time is focus more on gathering stories before I go to campsites and talk to the characters because I end up running into problems like with Quinn where I didn't have any funny stories to tell and I couldn't figure out which one would suit what they wanted to hear. It was a bit confusing so I didn't do so good on that part but did manage to have Mason open up to us a little bit so we heard more of his story. I just love hearing people's stories in this world and the voice acting is great, I keep saying that, but it, it really immerses you into this world and I like this game a lot so far. I hope you guys are too. I still love the music. You guys should definitely check out the soundtrack online. It has some really, really great songs and this game is a gem and I think that I'm, I'm just really happy I picked it up and decided to play it because it's a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed so far. Let me know what you thought in the comments and subscribe if you're new because I really love to have you stick around and watch me play some video games because I love to hang out with you guys and discuss these games. It's honestly really, really fun. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.